of what happens. We discussed this morning at Sunday school that, that nothing can happen to us that God does not allow. So pick your head up, <laughs> um, go into work, do what you got to do, and know that God is going to have his way this morning. Amen. Let's just give our God a hand clap of praise for being God over any situation in our life. said amen. Amen. We're just asking the Holy Spirit to meet us in this place and just have his way. Amen. Amen.
scripture reading this morning from the book of Romans, chapter number 8, beginning at verse number 28, and it reads, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, brethren, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, then who can be against us? The Greek says, because God is for us, who then can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make it intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Verse 38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen, amen. Our deacons will come and offer prayer. Let us all pray. Bow our heads. Gracious Father, eternal God, our Father. Father, we come this hour of the morning. We come with thanksgiving on our heart, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Heavenly Father. Father, we come thanking you for bringing us throughout this week, Heavenly Father. Amen. Father, you have brought us to the house of worship this morning, Heavenly Father. We just want to say thank you this morning, Heavenly Father. I have so much to be grateful for this morning, Heavenly Father. I just want to say thank you this morning. Thank you right now. Father God, as we come this morning, Heavenly Father, we ask to open our mind and our understanding, Heavenly Father, we ask you to give us love that runs from heart to heart this hour of the morning, Heavenly Master. Father God, we ask you for blessing for your word this morning, Heavenly Master. Let your word go forward and fall upon the heart of your people this morning, Heavenly Master. Father, we ask for blessing for this for the pastor, this shepherd of this flock, Heavenly Master. We ask you to bless him in the blessing that he stand and lead us this morning, Heavenly Master. Be a hedge all around him this morning, Heavenly Master. My Father, someone may be lost in this house this morning. I have to hook the hook of David in the heart this morning, Heavenly Master. Father God, someone may be looking for a church home this morning, Heavenly Master. Touch him in the way that you have him to go, Heavenly Master. Oh, Father, we're going to be careful to give you all the glory and the praise. Because you worried that our praise this day, Heavenly Master. We're so thankful this morning, Heavenly Master. In Jesus' name I pray and ask these blessings. Amen. Amen. Amen.
morning. morning. This morning, our responsive reading will be found in your Bible, the 23rd Psalm. That's the 23rd Psalm in your Bible and page 609 in your hymnal. That's 609 in your hymnal and the 23rd Psalm. And when you find it, could you please stand? It's known as the Shepherd Psalm. As Christians, our faith and our trust should be in Christ and not man. And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with all, my cup runneth o'er. All surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Good morning. We still have people coming in, so we'll wait. Good morning. morning. Would all of our visitors stand and please remain standing. Our pastor, Reverend Ferdinand Gaines Jr., along with our entire church family, would like to extend a very warm welcome to each of you. Here at First Community Antioch Baptist Church, the focus is on Jesus. So the power, the joy, the love, that you see and feel throughout our worship service are not by accident. You see, we're also a church that believes in prayer because we know what prayer can do. And so we invite each one of you to join us this morning as we continue to give God thanks for what he's already done. Thank you for coming today. If you are a first time visitor, would you please continue to stand to receive a welcome packet from a member of our hospitality ministry. Please complete the visitor's information card that may be found inside of the packet. Please return the card to one of our ushers, a member of our hospitality ministry, or place the cards into one of our collection plates. Thank you, and may God continue to bless and to keep each of you.
building up this in the school. It's going to school by every Sunday morning at the five p.m. and three o'clock by the way. The next session at Sunday school is session twelve. On God. announcements. One, just to remind you that you can still sign up for Discipleship Hour within the library after service. And um, also just to give you update information on the women's retreat, um, we did change the date um, because the date that we had was kind of conflicting with some events in this area. So, <laughs> so I know some of the ladies are pretty happy about that. But, you know, God is good. Normally, the rates at the hotel go up March 1st, but um, he worked it out so that we can still have the same rate. So the, the retreat is moved to March 3rd through the 5th. So we'll be going the weekend after Mardi Gras. <laughs> okay? Um, and the prices are the same. We'll be in the library. You can sign up starting today.
Good morning. Good morning. I want to inform everyone that the church have had a security system put in. Uh, as Rev said a few weeks ago, <coughs> there have been several churches broken into in the community. So we felt, we felt that it was time that we put a security system in the church. It's installed, it's activated, but we don't turn it on because we need everyone after church that have a key for the church to report to the library so they can sign up so we can uh, have someone to give you a code. We plan it on, turn it on, just Wednesday. So if you know of someone that have a key that's not here, they need to contact that person that we're of we're named so we can give them a code for it. Uh, we have a nice system. Uh, we feel that we are protected now if someone after hours tried to get in like they already did. And in this case, you know, we had an attempted burglary, but they wasn't able to get into the church. So uh, now we'll be protected. So again, after <coughs> service today, we need everyone to report to the library that have a key for the church. If you don't report, by Wednesday, and we start cutting it on. When you come in, you will have some friends come meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Any comments? Thank you. Okay, yes. One of the things that we change, everyone that have a key for the kitchen, the kitchen will not, no, will no longer be an access entrance for the church. The keypad on the door where Rev Office is and the other two halls, everywhere else there's no <laughs> keypad. So you have to have a key for w one of those three doors. If not, when you come in, you'll have a certain amount of time to get there. And if you don't get there, like I say, you're gonna have company coming. <laughs> and it won't be me. We have uh, motion detectors in all the halls, and we have contacts on all the doors. So no make a difference what entrance you get in. We also have a state-of-the-art system where we have the power on your telephone to cut it on, to access it, to, to know when you come in. So the person that rev or point will know who coming in and when they're leaving, when they cut the church, when they cut the service on and stuff. So it's simply like in house alarm. When you leave, you have to cut it on, the last person. We also have for Brother Clark and Rev, they don't have to punch numbers in. We have remotes where they just can hit it and it cuts off and stuff like that. So we were also thinking about it. We also, everyone that have a key will not have access to the business area. The business area is a separate zone. So it's going to take two codes to get in the business area. One for the sanctuary and the life center, but then it'll be a separate code. So if you have a key for the business area, and you shouldn't have a key, you won't have a code. <laughs> so it's, it's a way of, of, of keeping track of who's coming in and who's not, because you know the church have a lot of activity here. Amen. And we can't go around giving everybody the code. So we kind of have a system in where we can control who coming in and who coming out. Because at one point in time, churches were sacred. But in today's world we live in, anything goes with everybody. So we had to take the necessary steps to secure the church, to make you feel comfortable when you're coming up in here. And that's why we put the lights up and stuff. Our next phase, we're going to install cameras. But we're taking it one step at a time. As they say, you have to crawl before you, you can walk. And you gotta walk before you can run. So this is where you spending your donation and your contribution, you can see it going in the church and what else we're doing with it, okay? Thank you, and again, after service, we need everyone to report that have a key, and if you, they're not here, please contact them and tell them you have to contact because after Wednesday, someone will greet you. Thank you.
Thank you, Brother Ray Bell. I appreciate that. Thank you, and the church appreciate it as well. Uh, one other thing to say that uh, everybody who has a key will not necessarily have a key. We'll probably take some key because uh, we, we need to scale this thing down so that uh, we don't have all of these keys out in, in that sense. So, so only uh, those who have uh, uh, a, a, a quali quality need, then we, we'll do that. So we thank God for that. You make it all possible uh, for us to upgrade our system and uh, advance ourselves uh, in, uh, in the area of Christian ministry. So we want to thank you uh, for that. And there are other things you're doing too. Uh, and I, I try to remind of, a, uh, of this, say remind you, I try to, uh, to, to, to involve you in your understanding that just because the church uh, building is paid off, it doesn't mean we don't have a lot of uh, uh, indebtedness. We do for the upkeep, uh, insurance, and, and the many other things that we do. Amen? Amen. So we're so grateful for you. We're tremendously blessed this morning. Uh, uh, Minister Bra, Alton Bra, shares with us and broke the word of life. And we are so grateful for him and uh, his wife and his family. Amen? Amen. God bless you. God keep you heard the announcement. And thank you, Sister Jackson. Uh, we do want to be involved in the uh, discipleship hour. Uh, we, we, we're going to uh, emphasize this throughout the, the remaining part of the year. We want you to be uh, active in this fellowship. Know this, this is, the, this is your fellowship. It's your fellowship. And uh, you... Want to, we want you to take pride in your fellowship. We want you to feel a sense of uh, responsibility uh, to share and make this fellowship uh, what it's supposed to be. Need you. Need you to do that, you know. Uh, you're part of this church family, and uh, we need you to be involved in what's going on at this church. You represent talent. You represent abilities, and uh, you, uh, your gift your talent, your ability, uh, do not belong to you. It belongs to the church. God has given uh, <clears throat> the, the, the diversity of gift to facilitate growth and development. And uh, when you don't participate, you're depriving the church of what belongs to it. But also, and more importantly, you're depriving yourself of the blessings that God has associated with your gift. So that if you be faithful. God is going to do those extra special things for you. Amen? Amen. Got to do that. We got to do that. We got to do that. And uh, I'm looking forward to you being more, more involved. God bless you. God keep you. At this time, let us all stand. And we're going to recite our theme for the year. Our theme for the year is... Our Old Testament supported scripture is, it says, Our New Testament supported scripture is, Second Peter, it says, This is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. So glad, until at this time we want to warm, they greet somebody. Go forward in desiring that which is desirable. Go forward in desiring that which is desirable. Uh, 
that we can get. And I just chose a scripture. I just want to read it to you, and we want to uh, to 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 look at the scripture. Uh, Psalms 119, 125. Uh, look what the psalmist says. I am thy servant. I am thy servant. I'm not the boss. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, 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 one who should be given special privilege. I, I'm a servant. And, and, and listen, what a wonderful honor it is to be God's servant. Yes. To be a servant of God. And, and give me. He makes no claim to any merit. He makes no claim to earning anything, deserving anything. He doesn't fear that God is indebted to him. He realized that if anything good come into his life, it must be given. So he asked God, give me understanding. That, 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 thank he, he didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for prominence prestige, position, power. He said, give me understanding. If I have understanding, I can move about in life, making the, uh, recognizing things for what they really are and not make decisions based on appearances, but based on the intrinsic value of that which I face. So give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Lord, the work. They have made void thy law. Now he's, he's saying, Lord, that, that those who just disrespect your law, they have no regards for you, they don't consider your way, and it's time for you to, to move up against them. It's time, you see, this, some have, has, have uh, questioned the goodness of God, because he said if God was good and if his servant was good, why would they pray for punishment upon the, uh, uh, upon the people. But the psalmist and others recognize that God is holy and his character is righteous. And all sins are directed against the character of God. And so then he asks God to, to, to move against those who dishonor you and as a result make it difficult for man. And this is what he asks. He's not asking for a vindictive, a vindictive approach from God. He's saying, uh, 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 move in a way that, uh, that, that represent and honor your holiness. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold. Gold was the most precious uh, uh, material of that time. And so he said, even the most precious of all metal material, he said, I love your commandment even more. And, and uh, yeah, above fine gold. Go on to the next one. Therefore, Esteem all, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. I hate every false way. Because every false way, listen to me people, every false way will lead to destruction. Every false way will lead to heartaches and pain. Every false way will lead to regret and guilt. I don't care how beautiful, I don't care how enticing, I don't care uh, what the encouragement may be from others. Every fault, everything that is not sanctioned by God is going to cause you some problem. P.E. That testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, does my soul, does my soul keep them? The entrance of that word gives light. It gives understanding unto the simple. Out of the 176 verses that comprise this 119 Psalms, 174 has to do with God's word and God's precept, God with God's word. He mentioned God's word, 174, I'm thinking I'm right, uh, verses out of 176 show you the importance of God's word. Why do you think Satan keep y'all away from his word? Because he knows, Satan knows the value of the word. And Satan keeps us away from his word so that we can be comfortable in biblical illiteracy. That's sad. That's sad. Oh, Ronald Reagan said when he was president, he said, all of America's problem would be solved if everybody vote for Trump. No, no, not that. <laughs> not, no, that, that, that's what he said. 
<laughs> he said all of America's problem would be solved if the America would do two things. Obey the Ten Commandments and love the brother like they love themselves. That's simple as that. All of our problems would be solved if we would learn to just predicate our lives and our government upon God's word. Yeah. Am I helping somebody? Yeah. All right. So that was the last verse. Right. We thank God for the election. We thank God for what the result is. Amen. And let us remember, God is in control. That's the, that's the bottom line. God is in control. Let us not form uh, 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 pre pre preliminary conclusions, you might say. Let us not assume things. Just our responsibility is to pray that God will give guidance. And let me tell you, God can use Donald Trump just like he used me or you. That's up to God. You follow what I'm saying? Let us not prejudge and let us not assume whatever the case is, but let us see the importance of praying for our nation, praying for our leaders, praying for one another. That's our place. Okay? All right, so we thank God for that. At this moment, I do ask that we would come to the altar. We come to the altar and you're in the presence of God in a very special way. Know that God is with us. Know that God is with our nation. God is, is with every person, system that honor his name. And God is real. Let your conversation be wholesome conversation, positive conversation, encouraging conversation. If we can't say nothing good, let us not say nothing at all. The answer to our own dilemma, whether it is family, political, governmental, uh, school system, the answer is in God. And he promised that if we call on him, he'll get involved. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for making us a part of your family. Thank you, dear God, for the uh, spiritual culture that you have created for us to live in. May we see, dear God, your love. May we enjoy your privileges but where we also recognize and acknowledge our responsibility. And we have responsibility to worship you and to praise you and to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and body. And we also have a responsibility, Father, to obey those who have to rule over us. We got the responsibility to pray for our leaders. We have responsibility to lift them up to your throne. A responsibility, dear God, to, to treat them with respect and also to treat them with, with honor as they are deserving. For we know, dear God, the Bible tells us, your word tells us that the government are given by you. And Father, nothing can happen unless you cause it to happen or, or permit it to happen. And you have permitted the results, not only in the area of the presidency, but as far as senators and representatives and others, dear God, you are in control and we pray your guidance upon these men and women that you would lead them, Heavenly Father, in a way that this country would honor you and, 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 and serve one another. So we just thank you, Father. We thank you for this understanding. I thank you for these, your people. Guide and direct them and lead them in all areas of their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Go out and live victoriously. Go out and praise God. Go out and worship God.
go out and thank God for God is in control. He said, be still and know that I'm God. Go out and rejoice. No matter what it is, I look, go and rejoice. Because God can make all things work together for good to those who love him. Glory, hallelujah. God is real. He's still on the throne. Nobody at the throne him yet. He's real in our soul. Oh, he has Glory, hallelujah. Lift your voice and say. Just like you go. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, God. Why don't you lift your voice one more time and say that? Yes, God is real. If he's real, I mean he's in if he's real, he can do what no other power can do. If he's real, then he knows the plight that we take in life. If he's real, he can handle our difficulties and the difficulties of this world. If God is real, he can make ways out of no way. If God is real, he can pick you up when you fall down. He can take you in when you're outside. If God is real, he can touch your body. At this time, I'm going to ask Brother Elton Brow, Sister Melda Saul to come forward. And I'm going to ask the ministers and the deacons to form a circle around them. This is a moment where I want to honor them with the certificate of license. This, this is to certify that Brother Elton Brower and Sister Imelda Saul, who has given evidence that God has called him into a herald of the ministry, the gospel ministry, was licensed to preach the gospel as he may, uh, she may have opportunity and to exercise his, her gift in the work of the ministry by First Community Antioch Baptist Church at 10 860 Highway 3125, Lutcher, Louisiana, 70071. On the 13th day of November, 2006, signed by Clerk Roxanne Jackson Payne and Pastor yours truly. We're so grateful for them, yes. and we're grateful for their response yes. to what they feel in their heart yes. that God has for them. I thank the Lord for you all. Yes. You have shown yourself to be cooperative and willing, and I thank him for your Christian spirit. Yes. My desire is that you go forth in his name. Yes. Seek his guidance. The Lord called you, and it is the Lord's responsibility to inform you and make you aware of the specific gift and ability that he has given you and the specific areas of ministry that he has equipped you for. Look to him. Don't subject yourself to outward pressure. Now that you like, now that you like, and then you ought to do it look like to me. It's not what it looked like to others, it's what it looked like to God. Yes. Yes. And then that's one qualification that God requires. It is found in 1 Corinthians 4 and 2. Moreover, brethren, it is required in stewards that a man, a woman, be found faithful. Yes. Just be faithful. Yes. Don't try to go beyond 
what you're able to. Uh, don't try to run faster than what you're able to. And I, I speak in metaphorical terms. God will give you guidance and he will give you understanding. Don't go about laboring, trying to create opportunities for yourself. You're not responsible for creating opportunity. God's going to put lost people in your way virtually every day. He's going to put somebody who is hurting in your way every day. He's going to put somebody in your life who needs an encouraging word. But I tell you what, it might get a little comfortable, uncomfortable sometimes because God's going to put in your life people who need rebuke and people who need correction. And sometimes these people are going to be in your own family. But you have to be true to God and your responsibility is to obey God. God bless you all and I, 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 I encourage you to go forward in his name. Run the race with patience that is set before you. Shall we join our hands together? Our Father and our God, how blessed we all to know you as Father to be your children. We thank you, dear God, for this moment. We thank you, dear God, for Brother Bri. We thank you for Sister Saul. And I pray very special way, Heavenly Father, that you would just move mightily in their hearts and their minds. You give them understanding. You give them enlightenment. You give them, Father, spiritual fervency. You give them zeal, Heavenly Father, to run in the race that you have called them to run. I pray, Heavenly Father, that they would decrease in their own eyes and you would increase. I pray, Heavenly Father, that they would examine their own hearts and their own mind, dear God, to know, dear Father, that they have made a 100% commitment to you. I pray, Father, that they would not become discouraged where they don't see fruit of their labor. I pray that they would wait on you and learn, dear God, in due season, your word will not come back void. And so then, Father, I pray that you would be, hands be upon them, upon uh, Sister Melda, husband, upon Brother Brad's wife and their family. I pray, dear God, that you would give them peace and give them joy and give them understanding. I pray that they would get the support that they need from their household and from their families and from the church family. Dear God, I pray that they'll be encouraged in every way. May this day be a special day in their lives. I thank you for the men and women, dear God, who have joined hands together and those who have witnessed this event. I pray, Father, that working together, we will glorify your name, bring honor to your name, and good to the people. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you, God. Amen. God bless you, God. God bless you. God bless you. You can shake that hand. All right. I, I did uh, ask them to give an expression relative to what uh, have happened, uh, and uh, so they want to give an expression to the church. 
Amen. I think that's proper, don't y'all? I know y'all would agree. Peter 1 and 10 says briefly that to make your election sure. And in God's elect, he says that he has chosen you. And when you have received my calling from God, prior to receiving that calling, God had been calling me for a while. And just like any human being, I ran. You know, and not knowing what I was running from, and every time he called me, I ran a little bit faster. But anybody knowing God know that you can't outrun God. You can run and run and run, but he's gone, he's faster than us. So when he got tired of me running, he knew how to just knock me down. So then I give, now I just give God all my glory. I can't work fast enough or hard enough for him. Because everything I do is for his glory. And I'm just grateful and as I study his word and study his word, and the more I study, it looks like I'm still not studying enough. Because if I read one thing, it leads me somewhere else. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful because when I went to <clears throat> Isaiah 43 and 1, and that's when he told, when it says that, you know, he knew me then. And he called me by my name. You know, so way back then, if he knew me, I wasn't even a, a thought then and he knew me by my name, that says something special about me. So that let me know then that my calling was sure. You know, he called me not just, my calling is not for me. My calling isn't for humanity. My calling is not for selfishness. My calling is, first of all, it belongs to, to him, and then secondly, it belongs to any of y'all. And then it belongs to the world, to, to those who are lost. I'm supposed to go out there, yes, and save a dying world. I'm supposed to edify the saints. I'm supposed to do God's work. That's what, I, that's what my calling is to do. And I'm just happy. I'm happy doing God's work. Oh, but I stumble. I stumble along the way. But you know what the thing, when I stumble and I fall, he, I get up. But you know the thing about this journey, though? About this journey. And when I started this journey, you know, God, I got knocked down. Sickness came. Okay, Lord, you come on the journey, but then I'm going to get sick. But that was a test. It was nothing but a test. That test came just to make me stronger. And I got stronger, and I got better. And I thank God for sisters and brothers like I have that I can call on. Those ministers of God that we have are some powerful men. Men and women, strong, strong men and women of God that pastor had taught along the way that know God, and they're, they're there when you need them, and I'm thankful for them. So I thank God for my journey, and I ask that you pray for me as I continue my journey. And just know that, and old people used to say, I know I didn't make no mistake. And I know God know you didn't make no mistake, because like as I say, my election was sure. And I thank you, and as I, as I continue to say, I'm completely blessed and so humbled. Thank you very much, and be blessed. I was going to introduce myself as Alton Bry, but now I'm officially Minister Alton Bry. <laughs> I, I can say that now. But, I was going to do that anyway because not every member may have known me. Uh, when I came to Lutcher for five years, I just identified myself as Linda's husband and they knew who I was. <laughs> and, but now everybody's beginning to know me because I've done some service uh, here at the church and in the community. Uh, February the 4th of 2007, I was ordained as a deacon here. I am one of the uh, Bible study uh, youth Bible study teachers. And also, uh, one of the Sunday school teachers of the 55 years 